Don't miss Clownfish Studios' latest crowdfunder, Crimson Wren Volume 1 on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Thaddeus Wendell's greatest treasure is out there, and it's up to young mage Crimson Wren and the crew of a rundown airship called the True North to find it. But will they find it in time? Crimson Wren of the True North is a race against the clock filled with action, adventure, comedy, and heart. This is a brand new manga-style graphic novel from Clownfish Studios. Go to crimsonwren.com or check it out on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. It ends on November 18th. That's November 18th. And now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. Uh, Elon Musk daring Twitter to trash him all day. It'll cost you eight bucks. Oh, that was funny. It's like cash me outside. Trash me all day, cost you eight bucks. He's got a sense of humor. He does have a sense of humor. Uh, yeah, I don't know if the stress is getting to him or not, but we're gonna talk about the backlash in the wake of uh, Twitter Armageddon. He basically snapped half of Twitter staff yesterday. People are very salty, but he said he had to do it uh, because Twitter was bleeding out $4 million per day. $4 million, can you imagine? Who the hell can operate a company that loses $4 million a day? Also, when we did the video yesterday, we hadn't laid, fired people yet. And apparently they, they did cover the whole, uh, was it the Warren Act or whatever? They yes. did cover it because they got, they're, they're getting like up to February. Yeah. So that they're considered being an employee and they're getting packages. So they did cover their butts with that. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. I mean, uh -huh. this isn't his first rodeo. He, of course, operated uh, Tesla in California before moving it to Texas. So he knew what was legal. I'm sure he talked to people like, hey, I'm buying this company. This company is bloated. It's losing money. Half of the people working there probably want me dead and I got to deal with them and we got to get rid of them. How do we do it without, you know, and they're doing what they got to do. And I, I don't know if there's going to be any recourse for these people because they might be like, yeah, he's he's basically paying you not to be here because you're going to get in the way mm -hmm. uh, is what's going on. So let's let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys over 280, almost 281,000 subs. Thanks for the support. Um, yeah. So if you missed the memo, you missed the memo. Uh, there were two memos sent out yesterday. A congratulations. You get to stay at Twitter memo. And the other one was Hey, you're shit canned. Uh, sucks to be you. Sucks to be you. In a nice way. In a nice-ish way, but you know, don't wreck anything and you're still getting paid for the next two basically months. You're, and... Basically, you're locked out. You're still an employee here for two months. You're locked out, so you can't mess anything up. Right, <laughs> basically, right. you can't go uh, and break stuff. Because that's the problem. You have vindictive employees. And well, we know... someone blocked, I guess they said they blocked Elon Musk out of the system. Or they, they like, you know, took his Twitter down or something for a little while and everything else because yeah, they're you... like vindictive little, and you're proving him right. You're proving him right. Yeah, Twitter needs to be completely rebooted at this point. So um, coming from Fox Business, Musk also tried reassuring his followers that Twitter's commitment to content moderation has not changed amid concerns over how the site's going to be policed. Well, the, here's the thing. People are like mad about this. You're going to have to have some, you know, parameters what you have to stay in because advertisers are going to advertise in the site when it's a free for all and everybody's out there calling everybody names. The issue lies in the fact that for the longest time, certain people couldn't say some things, but other people could say things that were very similar or the same. And it was a double standard. If you're going to do this, you're going to have to please everyone evenly and equally. Yeah. So that's the problem. That is the fundamental problem with Twitter is that Twitter has not been uh, even and equal for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what you say. He said, regarding Twitter's reduction in force, unfortunately, there is no choice when the company is losing over $4 million a day. Everyone exited uh, was offered three months of severance, three months of severance, which is 50% more than legally required. Uh, the layoffs began with a letter to employees saying about half the company's 7,500 person workforce would be losing their jobs. Uh, it's the latest shakeup. I think this is just the beginning. I mean, he's apparently cracking the whip trying to get uh, this, this new verification rollout up and running by next week. And people were complaining about 12 hour days. And I guess part of me is like, how many months and weeks did you work here where you were allowed to work like two hours a day? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, what people did, I mean, I mean, it was, it's not surprising if you'd been on Twitter before he took over right. and before it came out that some people weren't like, you know, for mental health days and stuff. So a class action lawsuit was reportedly filed against the company by workers who claim the layoffs violate federal law requiring 60 days notice. 
Um, that would be the Warren Act, which is federal, which I, I, didn't, I wasn't even aware of because most of the layoffs at the companies I've been at, they've done them in waves and in smaller groups. But apparently, if you're going to do a mass, mass layoff federally, you do have to tell people, hey, we're going to lay you off in two months, which is a business owner's not a great thing because you have to tell your employees, you know, where the business is going. Well, and not just that. So they, can, they, can, they can go ahead and like run to your yeah, competition or right. screw up your stuff. Thing is, it's funny to me, though, because the difference between PA and California. <laughs> so. Yeah, we filed this up. Well, apparently it, it, it does cover Pennsylvania, too. But I, I mean, Pennsylvania, not that we've just, seen. Pennsylvania just doesn't give a shit. I mean, I've been so I mean, they might just be skirting it, but they don't they don't seem to give a shit. Uh, we filed this lawsuit tonight in an attempt to make sure employees are aware they should not sign away their rights. Uh, in addition to the layoffs, Musk has reported he removed Twitter's Days of Rest perk. Days of, oh, that's the one there people were talking about. Removed their Days of Rest perk from employee calendars and plans to cancel its remote work policy with some exceptions. Uh, minutes before tweeting about the layoffs, he reassured his followers about Twitter's content policy and concerns over Potential increase in hate speech. Um, yeah, well, okay, so here's the thing. He put together this council, and we did a video the other day. It's kind of like, dude, you're like kowtowing to the very same people that turned Twitter into a you know, one-sided cesspool. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you know, but I think he's trying to be fair. The problem is, is when you're dealing with people that want absolute control. There is no meeting us halfway. Right. I it mean, hasn't been. Twitter hasn't been fair for several years now. No, because nobody at Twitter wants conservative views or even moderate views to have a place on the platform. So they demonize it as as hate speech. Oh, yeah. Um, not liking a cartoon is hate speech. Literally, it's literally killing people. Yes. Uh, calling somebody out for stealing somebody else's art and changing the skin tone or whatever uh, because it's a shitty thing to do. Uh, that's hate speech. You mm -hmm. literally want that person dead because they fixed. Meanwhile, I've seen people that are on the other extreme literally telling people to kill themselves. Yes. But that's okay. So um, <laughs> most of the cuts came from the trust and safety committee. The, mm -hmm. Basically, the people that were in charge of monitoring content on Twitter. He basically fired everybody that was a uh, gatekeeper. At Twitter, and we've seen this before. This kind of happened at Kickstarter too. I think he realized like this is a problem. This is actually going to cost us money, and we're not going to be able to turn this platform into what we want to turn it into if we have these same people here constantly, uh, you know, enforcing uh, undermining. Undermining. Yes, that's the um, word. Enforcing is not the word. Undermining. It's okay is if the he word. said just kidding afterwards. It makes everything just okay. Kidding. Because we had people threaten, they joke, they had a picture of somebody punching a kid in the face and they were going to do it to our kids because they said, just kidding, it didn't violate terms of service. <sighs> so they're talking about the people getting their, their benefits um, from The Verge, but uh, people are like, you know, it's, I don't know if I should be grateful or gutted because everybody's going to work harder at Twitter. I'm like, yeah, they are. Um, but the ones that are hit the hardest are the trust and safety people. The areas of Twitter impacted the most by Musk's Cuts include its product trust and safety, policy, communications, tweet curation, tweet curate. ethical, ethical AI. AI. That would be the algorithm, what the algorithm boosts and doesn't boost. Yeah, they're complaining about it. Um, yesterday was my last day at Twitter. The entire human rights team has been cut from the company. I'm enormously proud of the work we did to implement the UN guiding principles on business and human rights to protect those at risk in global conflicts and crises including Ethiopia. Um, let's see, this guy's, uh, look like, looks like Elon Musk fired the entire curation team. These were the folks who tackled misinformation, uh -huh. contextualized conversations via the Explore page. So they would tell you like, well, so-and-so is saying things right. are not true. A lot of times, there was times they were right and there was a lot of times they weren't. Uh, and helped make Twitter an unmatched source for breaking news. Um, this will make Twitter <laughs> noisier, more dangerous, wait, and less wait, wait, interesting. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, you guys like buried a bunch of shit. How was that the unmatched source for news? Is because you bur you buried stuff. The entire ethics, transparency, and accountability team at Twitter is gone. If you want a sense for where the site is headed, the site is headed for freer speech. It's not going to be a free for all, but they're going back to what it was about ten years ago, and they're going to try to monetize it. And these people have actually been. Uh, holding Twitter back because they're holding free speech back. Well, then why is he still on Twitter talking about it? That's a damn good thing. Y'all can leave. They won't. 
they won't. That's okay. So this is what's ultimately about, right? This is what's ultimately about because Twitter, again, we've we've said, even though normal people don't use Twitter, the people that use Twitter use it for activism, pushing agendas. Uh, it's been a, ma- a mouthpiece for the left. I'm just going to say what it is. The last five to six years. It didn't years used to be. It no, used to it be everybody could vote the way they wanted to, and sometimes you agreed and sometimes you didn't. But here's here's what here's what people believe. Here's their policies. You make your own decision. Yes. It hasn't been that way for a while. This is coming from somebody who normally leans left. So we've got the Washington Post, right? The Washington Post, uh, owned by you know Jeff Bezos, by the way. Who you know. fairly much leans left. Yeah, but. Uh, so they're they're so worried that half of Twitter got fired before the elections. That's, That's what they've been saying the whole time we took over. But the elections, but the elections. Why are you so upset about that? Why, why would so if you weren't misusing Twitter to manipulate, control, like not post everything fairly and all that, and you had nothing to do with that, and and, and it's being misrepresented by Elon Musk? Why are you all so damn worried about the elections if that Twitter wasn't used for that? If Jeff Bezos bought Twitter instead of Elon Musk. It'd be fine. Right. It'd be but I'm fine. just saying, if you're going on about how, you know, oh, we're not, we're not, we're not, you know, hiding information. We're the, the, the source for news. We are not playing sides. You're full of it. it. We're not doing any of that stuff. It's mostly the Republicans on Twitter. All that shit. Why would you care if you about how the election that people are fired in the groups that, that control algorithms? Control information, control, you know, who's allowed to see things, control, you know, who's, who's shadow banned and who's not, even like, because they said they weren't doing that, but they proved they were. Why would you care if you didn't have anything to do with that? And that was not what Twitter was about. Yeah. So now we're going to see, we're going to see a couple of uh, um, robber barons in action here, right? So these two guys have a beef, Musk and Bezos, because they're both trying to get to space and they both own a lot of stuff and they're both very, very rich. And Bezos, I think, is very salty that he's not the richest man in the world. Well, he might be richer if he hadn't, you know, had got divorced. <laughs> Washington Post, right? Most read stories, Elon Musk, Elon Musk, Elon Musk. Advertisers are fleeing, Elon Musk, Twitter layoffs. Elon Musk begins mass layoffs. Elon Musk is the devil, everybody. Well, that's okay. He's... He could just hire everybody over at Amazon. He could. There you go. There you go. Problem so, solved. So I'm sure, I mean. Bezos could solve world hunger. He could. Why isn't Bezos solving? Why is he owning the Washington Post and doing all kinds of hippies to Elon Musk and on, on, on people that aren't Democrats when he could be out there fucking solving world hunger? He's the second richest duck in Duckburg. He, I'm like, he has he a could responsibility. Go out there. I mean, yeah, I know, right, right, you know? Right? You instead of buying social... the Washington Post. Instead of spending a billion dollars on. The Lord of the Rings fan fiction, it's not even fan fiction, it's fiction, garbage. You could have spent that billion dollars on, on and solve some world's one of the world's problems. Giving them what the hell, Bezos? Every, you could you could uh prime ship everybody a sandwich. Well, I mean, yeah, he's got food. He could be t- he could be sending all kinds of money and food to the homeless. Yeah, they I'm they, sure he probably does for tax breaks, same as Musk, but you know. Yeah, right? I mean, seriously, seriously. What what are you doing, dude? Um yeah, so here are some of the reactions. Trash me all day. It still costs eight bucks. The uh, thing is, I never asked for it. I got 500,000 followers. Why should I pay now? Because you will. You will. You will but pay. But if you never asked for it, then why do you care if you have it? They're going to tweet their hatred for Elon Musk on a platform owned by Elon Musk, which is going to generate activity on the platform. Which will get Elon Musk money. Which will make him money because pe- more people will come to the platform to watch the dumpster fire burn and they'll pay $8 because they want a better dumpster but fire burning experience. The per- we, we get this correct. The person's mad because he never asked for a blue check. He was given a blue check. And now he's got to pay $8 for the blue check. Well, just don't take the blue check. Just say, okay, I don't want to pay the $8. I mean, that's not that hard. I'm like, you never asked for the blue check to begin with. So why does it matter? I if you want- don't care about that blue check. Because it's everything. This I have seen so much. I talked about this yesterday. I have seen so much hand wringing from comic book professionals, just comic book professionals, animation people over Twitter. Like they are literally acting like this is another pandemic. This is another global catastrophe that, oh my God, our Twitter, our Twitter got bought by a right wing shitlord. Oh my God, this is the end of everything. I'm, I'm like, just it's just one fucking app. Go find another app. Go somewhere else. Well, this is funny. 
I'm in. Eight dollars a month for Twitter is cheaper than more entertaining than Netflix. That is true. That is true. But uh, everybody losing their shit. Um, I love just watching this. I mean, this is this is what I wanted. I, I mean, I don't know if Twitter. I'll be honest. I don't know if Twitter is going to get any better. I just don't want these shit bags to be able to lord over people anymore because they've had too much power for too long and they have destroyed a platform that was once pretty decent. They've destroyed it and they've weaponized it. They've literally weaponized Twitter because the journalists use it to write hit pieces and then it just, you know. Is this dipshit a journalist? Probably. Yes. Okay. Listen to this GQ shit. GQ Magazine. Listen to this. Oh, that explains everything. Fact resistance. checker, Conde Nast. Look, read his comments. This is what... $220 billion man who just fired 3,700 Americans needs your $8 to turn a profit. Can you spare the price of one cup of coffee to help a billionaire sell you free speech? You're allowed to fucking have free speech, Luke. No one took that away from you. You're just mad because you have a check mark and you don't want to pay for it. The world's richest man has taken possession of a global social media platform used by the world's journalists, first thing. Scientists. Yep. It's, it's used by everyone, Luke. Let's just cut the chase. It's used by everyone. The problem has been that journalists have taken it over and the activists have taken it over. And it's like vital information. It has shared vital information. You don't share vital information. You share skewed information based on what certain people who are in charge believe. The people are, are setting up algorithms and things like that to, in, to you know, make sure that certain people are, are magnified and heard while others are not. That is not free speech, Luke. Basically, let me, let me fix it for you. You can pay eight bucks so I have to pay for my check mark and then everybody can get actual free speech I don't control. And I'm pissed about it. Yes, that is exactly it. Um, and honestly, it's, it's like one of, those, one of those credit card commercials. It's like, how much does free speech cost? $44 billion and $8 after that. Price, it's worth it. It's worth every penny. And like they, no one's, they keep they keep trying to run this narrative. These journalists, especially, free speech is gone. Free speech on Twitter has been gone for years. It, yeah. it hasn't been free speech. It's been free speech for some on Twitter. Uh, it, it, it's been transparency for some on Twitter. It hasn't been the the truth. It's been the truth of the twist for a while now. You don't have to pay the eight dollars. You still get free speech. You just get a check that you're verified if you pay $8. And you know people are going to listen to people who have been verified because they're the real people and they're not your bots. And that's what you're pissed about. Yeah, and what's going to happen is if they go through and they get rid of the bots, I think we're going to see a lot of people's follower accounts drop dramatically uh, almost overnight. Yes, yeah, they're afraid of. They're going to know they're fake. Yep, I think it's hilarious. I think it's hilarious. Well, yeah, this is it right here because originally – this guy's right. Twitter's verification system was originally tested for public officials, agencies, celebrities, people at risk of impersonation, right? The blue check quickly became a coveted seal of approval, even though the process remained intransparent and a constant source of controversy. It's true because for a long time, they, they froze it. The people weren't able to get blue checks. And then all of a sudden, they turned back on. All these people, I wrote an article once for some outlet, so now I get a blue check. And then there's people that are legitimately notable. Case in point, us, because we run actual news sources and stuff too, news outlets. But they're not the right one. But no, they, they are the right ones. But we're That's not on the right. We, we try we're to not. be fair. That's still and they right won't, wing. And they won't give up. They refuse. <laughs> even if we have trademarks, even though we have all this stuff to prove that we yes. are who we say we are, they refuse to give us a blue check. Um, we can verify ourselves 10 times over. They will not. But some dipshit wrote an article once for CBR. And it was like a shitty article no one read. Blue check. <sighs> God. Uh, yeah. So basically, this is about losing power. This is why everybody's so angry, losing influence. And uh, this is what needed to happen. Twitter has been, again, I've said it multiple times, even though a lot of normies don't use the website, it has an inordinate amount of influence on pop culture, on politics, uh, on the truth that gets out to the media. And it is the media's cesspool, basically. This, this is ground makes zero. Sense. It doesn't even make Why sense. Why do they think they're going to be rich because Elon Musk is there? It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Sir, another activist group. Well, that's just it. I mean, I think eventually if if Twitter can be uh, turned back into a pretty sane place that is attractive for normies because, like, grandma is not using Twitter. When grandma starts using Twitter to share photos of the kids and everybody's on Twitter because it's been cleaned up, then the advertisers will come back. Right now... I'm telling you, all, all of the uh, advertisers that are threatening to pull, I don't think Twitter meant 
anything to them. I don't think it impacted their, their sales in any way because the people you're advertising to on Twitter, most of them are fake. Most of them are far left activists. They're not the people that are gonna buy products. You were basically burning your money advertising on Twitter and uh, they'll come back. If they think there's something yet for them, they'll, they'll come back, they will. Anyway, we're gonna wrap this up. Yep. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.